Charlie Simon, you're so vain. That's our last record this evening from Radio Caroline. The time being 10 to 10. It's exactly 10 to 10 on Radio Caroline. And this is Crispy and St. John. I've just been told by our chief engineer, Chicago, that we're having to leave the air almost immediately. Um, we have discovered we have a severe shortage of fuel on board the Mi Amigo. So we're now having to leave the air. We're back on the air, I promise you, as soon as possible. Until then, stay with us and... Uh, don't forget, stay uh, tuning into 199 and we'll be back as soon as possible um, to our office in Skaveningen. Perhaps we can have some fuel out as soon as possible and you can get a message to the man. It's nine minutes to seven o'clock. This is Radio Caroline broadcasting from the motor vessel Mi Amiga, anchored in international waters off the coast of Holland. We're now closing down. So on behalf of our staff and management in Skaveningen, we wish you a very good Wednesday evening. And on behalf of uh, Chief Engineer Chicago, Andy Archer, and uh, myself, Chris Bins and John, and our staff in Skaveningen, we wish you good night and uh, God bless and uh, hope to see you very, very soon. This is Radio Caroline closing down. Goodbye. This is Radio Caroline on 199 meters medium wave band at midnight tonight. An explanation from Chicago, the chief transmitting engineer on the station for the break in transmissions lasting 60 minutes. Good morning, you're tuned to Radio Caroline. The time is 12 midnight and uh, myself, Chicago, just uh, a brief explanation as to why we went off the air so suddenly and uh, disastrously. Well. Um, every ship, I think, has its problems at the time, and uh, there's many cooks gone berserk on a ship, but never an engineer before. Well, on this ship, we had an engineer go berserk, and, uh, well, at the moment, we're without a diesel engineer, and uh, also all the oil feeds have been turned off, so I was down in the engine room with Andy and uh, Crispin trying to find out how to get some diesel, engine, uh, diesel oil from the main tanks into our generator. Well... We had to cut a few pipes and uh, disconnect a few things, but uh, we've got the oil flowing now. We've got plenty of oil in the tanks, and we're going to continue broadcasting. Um, no other problems out here. Um, in case anybody is listening and knows our office telephone number, it would be a very nice idea if somebody could telephone our office and just let them know that things are very fine out on the ship now, and uh, we've got no problems now. And also a message to the people on the Mevo. Thank you very much, Robbie, for your kind wishes. We were listening, and uh, maybe you're listening again now that we're back in the air again. Um, I think that's all. So um, we're all very dirty. I'm covered in diesel oil literally from head to foot because uh, <laughs> as we were cutting through one of the pipes, there was a lot of oil in the pipe and uh, we all got a bit andy. Is, uh <laughs> <laughs> well, in fact, all of us, we, um, well, we don't look like disc jockeys or radio engineers or anything. This is a record now from the level, Loving Spoonful. I think it's very appropriate from Caroline. It's called Never Going Back. We don't... The Eagles and the shrink called Witchy Woman. We've got guests, so I'm going out on deck. See you later. You're listening to Radio Caroline on 199 meters. Quite some events are happening outside. Uh, there's a Dutch naval destroyer, the D814, parked about 200 yards away from us. And... Uh, also, a small launch from this destroyer has come alongside us. We don't know what's happening. It seems to be a slight problem. But we're talking with the crew of the small launch, and standing back away is a, a ship called the Sea News, along with um, certain personnel from Radio Caroline. So, to our office in Skavenninger, everything is all right at the moment. As soon as we have any news, we'll, of course, come on and tell you about it. Until then, we go on with some music from... The band, and this is a live OP starting off with a number called The Wait. We're having a lot of trouble out here. There's a fight starting on the deck over something, so we may have to go off the air. We'll continue music until then. You're back on um, Caroline. Caroline is back in the air. Does it mean that all problems are solved now? Yes, well, I mean, most, most of the... It's now running as a radio station. Um, Caroline... Um, had a few difficulties, to say the least, and those difficulties were beyond our control. Um, nobody had any permission to move the ship from here. Uh, it was brought in on the basis of seaworthiness, 
but uh, there was no problem with seagulls in. Yes, and uh, it is, that's not up to you, but up to the captain on the moment on the ship to uh, to, to see what this um, what is necessary to do with the ship, and he brought it in for it on seagulls. He says well, the problem was that he was not the captain of the ship. Uh, he claimed to be the captain, but I had left here on that night, and when I left here that night, I, I uh, Peter Chicago was the acting captain. Captain Van der Kamp wasn't here then. Uh, captain Van der Kamp came on board at three o'clock in the morning uh, without my consent, uh, without my permission. But anyway, that is a matter that is in the hands of the lawyers. It's very complicated. It involves international law. I've informed the Dutch Navy uh, and, and the Dutch police, and the, the matter is being dealt with in, 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 in the only way it can be dealt with, through the process of law. You said the, the, the problems themselves, also the, the financial problems, but um, you know it were uh, exactly the financial problems uh, which were the source of the, the, the whole theater uh, last week. Well, that I, I dispute that, uh, you know, I completely dispute that. Uh, as far as I'm concerned, uh, the cost of the operation, uh, the towing of this ship from here to a mutant and putting it in Amsterdam is a very expensive operation. Who paid it? I would love to know who paid it. Um, all I know so far is that the Dick Rose Tender Company did the job. Um, but, he is, but he is under a contract for Radio Norsey, you know. Well, I, I know he's under contract for Radio Norsey. Um, so, but I can't say anything. Um, everyone has drawn their own conclusions, and a lot of people have said to me, uh, so and so and this and that, but I can't... Uh, I can't draw any conclusions. I can't make any statements about who really is behind what happened last week. Maybe it's, uh, it could be interesting for uh, for people from other uh, other Paris stations uh, to, to 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 kill uh, the third one, or not? Well, of course. <laughs> I mean, it is obviously always a possibility that uh, the other stations. I mean, they tried to buy me off on two occasions. Uh, they came and offered money. Uh, to, for me to just to, to take it away. How much? Well, I mean, the, the offers were, you know, not something I wanted to, to get into the actual amounts and things, but the fact is they they tried to buy us off, and we said, no, it wasn't, you know, we weren't for sale. Do you think what you're doing here in uh, on the sea with uh, Radio Norsi and Radio Veronica is, is a legal action? Is, is it legal? Yes. Oh, it's 100% legal. We are more legal in, 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 in this position than many... Uh, European broadcasting stations. For instance, Radio Luxembourg is the most powerful pirate in Europe today. It broadcasts on a frequency that it was not allocated. And therefore, you know, under the European Broadcasting Union, it, it is a pirate. We are not pirates because we, uh, on, on, in, in strict legal terms, we did not sign any 1948 Copenhagen plan. We did not agree not to broadcast, and it is quite legal in international waters to broadcast, so, th so that we are doing nothing illegal.